Hello, I am K7JDP, and today we're going to talk about the Oregon 400T uh, GPS and the Kenwood D710A VHF uh, UHF ham radio receiver transmitter. Specifically, we're going to talk about launching APRS with these two devices. Now, with these two devices, you also need a cable to connect them together. This is the Garmin connection table, cable, which you can pick up at GPS City. What it will do is it will hook into the cable that was provided to you by Kenwood when you got the radio. Kenwood gave you this little headphone uh, microphone jack um, that will plug into the side here. So the first thing you need to do is make sure your cable is set up properly. You'll notice that there are uh, five wires that are going to come out of your Garmin cable that you purchased. Two of them, the black and red, will go to your uh, fuse setup. This will be necessary for your power. And the nice thing about it is that when you plug it in, your 400T will just power on without going to mass storage mode. The other three wires are used for your data and grounding. You'll notice here that there, as we try to get through the blurriness, um, there is a red wire, there is a white, sorry, there is a red wire, a white wire, and a bronze wire that are with the uh, Kenwood side. And then there is a green wire, a yellow wire, and a white wire on the uh, Garmin side. You'll plug the red wire from the Kenwood side into the yellow wire on the Garmin side. You'll plug the white wire uh, of both sides into each other. And then lastly, you'll plug the green side wire on the uh, Garmin into the bronze uh, shielding on the Kenwood. Once you have that set up, we should be able to start working on setting up APRS. So, you'll notice first of all, this is my main screen, APRS runs on 144.390. That is what uh, most APRS signals go. So, with that set up, we ha I have it set up on the left side, and you'll notice that I have um, this set up to APRS 12, and I have the TNC turned on. A major problem that people have had in the past with APRS not working is because the TNC is not turned on. If TNC is not turned on, you will notice that nothing will work. Uh, you'll notice here that the that when there is nothing up above, the TNC is turned off. Turn the TNC on, you'll see APRS 12 should be up here, opening TNC, you'll see your beacon and your GPS. I apologize for the, uh, the shakiness of the camera since uh, doing it one hand and got the other hand on the camera here. So let's go into the uh, functionality. We'll go into our menu, over to APRS, and then we'll go to our basic settings. So the first thing you need to do is set up your call sign and your beacon type. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. We'll set up the internal TNC. These are very important for the, the specifically the Garmin uh, setup, which is data band is A band, 1200 BPX, BPS, uh, D or RX band for your uh, sense, and 200 milliseconds. We'll set up your GPS port, needs to be 4800 BPS. Input is GPS and output is waypoint. Uh, your waypoint uh, will be in NMEA format. Your name will be nine characters and your output is filtered. By the way, we'll talk about the filtered output. There's another menu that allows you to select which APRS stations to filter on. You can also set this output to all if you just want to get all APRS stations. COM port will be off. My location, uh, this is for hard coding in a location. So say your GPS for some reason isn't working um, or the cable isn't working, you can manually take your settings from your Garmin and then just plug them into your, uh, your latitude and longitude. But when the GPS is working, it ignores my position. Your beacon information, you can say uh, what information is sent out to the APRS. Uh, stations. Um, I have speed and altitude both on. I also turn off position ambiguity. That basically hides your Latin long. Uh, that sort of defeats the whole purpose of APRS in my opinion, at least for what we're doing. Uh, you can set a comment um, for whatever. Um, and then nice uh, thing for the Kenwood is that you can send a status text out with your uh, APRS location. What this is, is your frequency megahertz. You can say what uh, station you're currently monitoring on your other band. So they can see your, your, um, your stereo, um, and then they can go call you on that other band. 
Uh, this goes back to the filtering that we talked about a minute ago. You can see I have weather, mobile, and DigiPeters uh, plugged in. The other ones I don't care for. Uh, I don't want to send those to my APRS or to my GPS. Uh, we are riding in a Jeep, so I, that's my station icon. Um, the transmission algorithm, uh, make sure uh, I have the interval for starting at two minutes. Um, the delay and pro proportional pathing I have off. Um, some of this is useful for uh, reducing how many uh, stations you get. Depending on where you're at, um, if you make the pathing too far, you'll get stations from really far away that might not be too useful. Uh, the other useful thing on this screen, which we'll talk about, there's uh, two menus further on, uh, is smart beaconing. We'll go into that in a moment. Packet path, uh, just set these these settings here. Again, the wide one and uh, one one and two to one. That basically says two hops um, for your total. Um, that's what I found is useful. I live in Bellingham, Washington, and with this, I get most of the Greater Vancouver area as well as uh, Everett North. Um, if I set this farther, I probably would get Seattle and maybe even Portland, and that's not very useful to me. Uh, network set to APRS. Uh, voice alert, I just have these default settings. I don't have a weather station. Uh, this I have turned on DigiPeat. This means that if you receive an APRS call, um, then send that signal out with your call sign and theirs uh, so that they can get um, out to the APRS network. And then these are just settings for uh, the DigiPeat, I believe. And so I have those set the standard there. Uh, user phrases, I don't have any. Now we're talking about not GPS stuff, but this is for text messaging with APRS. I just have something that says I got your message. Um, you can set group filtering on text messages for APRS and set up the sound. Uh, this can get a little annoying if you are uh, if you have the beep. When you're talking, you'll hear a little beep go on. Um, yeah, uh, you can change those as you need. Um, and then as you saw at the beginning, I had the APRS on this side. Uh, I set it to half, and uh, since we are in the States, I have it to, to miles, although I like Celsius better. Um, and then I set my position in the standard uh, uh, degree format. And I'm not going to work with Navitrug Group's message. So then we look at smart beaconing. So this is where you can set up basically how often you want to send out your GPS signal. This is important for four-wheel drive. Um, if you're not going to be just driving on the street, uh, so if you're going slow and fast, this basically figures out if you're going slow. Um, and for the second menu, if you're going around corners, um, basically send out faster signals or slower signals. And uh, these settings seem to work pretty well. If you're doing off-roading, uh, going on uh, you know, adventures and whatnot, uh, these are pretty good settings to have. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for that part. Let's, uh, let's go to our main menu here. So you'll see here the APRS. If I go down to list, I can see the, uh, the list of people we're getting. Um, let's go in real quick and take a look at our, uh, our Garmin. This is a pretty easy setup. We'll just go to setup. We'll go to system. We'll go to uh, the interface down here. And the interface is NMEA, in and out. And then you have NMEA sentences, the autopilot mode, off, uh, waypoint, Precision is four digits and baud rate is 48. Important to be 48, not 96. And that's all you need to do to set up on your, your Garmin uh, to start receiving information. You'll see here that I just got VE7 IPX. So let's go take a search for him. We can go where to, uh, find another, and we can go uh, VE7 VE. Seven. Um, actually, we have KA up on the screen at the moment. There's VA7KA. We can go, where is he? He's located uh, at 76th, and we can hit go. And there we go. And we can find, we can just start tracking him. Um, and as he moves, it'll track him as well. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, you can set up te uh, text messages. And if you go to the list of APR stations, let's see if we can find anyone. Some of them are D710s. It doesn't look like anyone's using the uh, signal to say where, uh, what frequency they're on. But um, if you have a D710, you can set up to be that way. Oh, there we go. There's one. 
VA7 LLB is looking at 146,460, so I can go get them looked up there. I'm K7JDP. I hope that you found this informative.